are provided by way of modules, such as its ability to log, or to connect to an LDAP server, or to check our security, or to talk to a DBD file to read it, or to ascertain variables from the environment for which Apache de depends heavily upon, or to handle aliases, which allows us to reference content in the web space to various locations throughout our file system, or to support user directories, whereby you'll allow normal non-privileged users on your system the right to publish files from their home directory. There are all sorts of modules, and this is only a fraction of the list of modules available for Apache. So now let's define a new task, and that is to explore the main Apache configuration file, httpd.conf. And then after we've explored the file, we'll fire the server up and attempt to use it. So explore etchttpd.conf, httpd.conf. Let's return to the shell. We'll do so using nano, as it's quick to parse from the shell. So we'll navigate into conf, and there's that main file. Now the httpd.conf file, regardless of distribution, is a generic file derived from the distribution of Apache, and it is heavily commented describing the directives that are included. If you scroll down through this beyond the first set of comments, you'll see directives that pertain to the server as a whole. It's called a global environment. There's a server tokens directive, which allows you to publish information to clients, in particular when a client accesses a resource that is not available, generating an error, such as a 404, then you'll see the Apache server tokens OS return. So, for example, on this repository, if we attempted to access a resource that doesn't exist, such as index.php, Apache will respond returning the server tokens. In this case, on the SUSE box, it returns that it's Linux and SUSE, nothing else. Whereas there are other tokens, if you look up the server tokens directive using your local version of the documentation or the version at the Apache website, you'll see the additional tokens that may be enabled. The server root. This is the top-level directory as far as the running Apache instances are concerned. And we say instances because multiple instances are loaded whenever Apache is started by default. So Apache sees the root of its file system as etchttpd. Of course, since Apache runs as root, it has access to, sp to space outside of etchttpd, but for the intents uh, and purposes of restricting connecting clients, their root is locked in to etchttpd in terms of connecting the configuration files. So Apache processes its configuration files from the top level etc, lower level httpd, which is where we are in the directory structure. The file that's to be created, if you remember we did mention that the symbolic links for logs and run are referenced from the primary config file. If we navigate to etchttpd, we'll see those symbolic links, and run really part points to var run, so for the server PID that gets created, the PID file directive references the symbolic link run httpd.pid. So when this server starts, it'll use the symbolic link run and create a PID file, or a process ID file, beneath var run, as do other processes. How long before timing out a connection? 120 seconds. Whether or not keep alives are to be on or off. Keep alives provide a way to speed up connectivity between client and server so that the sessions aren't torn down as often. Turn this on if you notice any performance degradation. The maximum keep alive requests per connection is 100, so within a given connection, a client can make up to 100 requests before the server will stop serving that particular client. And this is done so that one or more clients do not 
overwhelm the resources of the server. The number of seconds to wait for the next request for the same, from the same client, 15 seconds. So within a given connection, a client has 15 seconds to make another request. Apache runs in various modes. And if it runs in the pre-fork mode, it follows the following directives, or it uses the following directives. Pre-fork mode is also known as classic mode, in that it forks n number of servers and will start up to maximum number of servers to service clients. So in pre-fork mode, the Apache server, the main process starts eight instances. The minimum number of spare servers that it'll keep are five. So if it starts and three servers are being used, five are free. If the fourth server is being used, then only four are free, and it will need to start an additional server up to a maximum number of 20. There are limits set for the server and for the client. So let's scroll down. We'll use Control V to advance one page full at a time. And we have another mode of running Apache. This is the multiprocessing mode. And in this mode, it will start two servers, both multiprocessor aware and both multi-threaded. And it has its limits of clients, threads, so on and so forth. So Apache runs in two modes. One is in pre-fork mode where it launches distinct processes up to a maximum of 20 spare servers to handle requests and also in multi-threaded mode where it starts fewer servers but each server is free to launch distinct threads to handle the processes. The listen directive governs the port or ports that Apache listens to. By default, being a web server, it listens to port 80. But it could be programmed to listen to any port, such as 443 for SSL, 8080, or any port between the standard ports up to 65535. So long as the port that you choose isn't being used by some other process. We did mention that Apache is modular. It supports DSOs, or dynamic shared objects. The modules that we saw loaded in the mod module directory are referenced from the httpd.conf file, the main file. In other distributions such as SUSE, the loading of modules are split out much neater into separate files. But in Red Hat, it's lumped into this main configuration file, so you just have to deal with it in one place. But it works nonetheless. works just like it does in other distros, just not as organized. So the modules that are loaded are indicated in this file, and they're loaded using the directive load module, the name of the module, and the path to the module. And again, this path is relative to the top-level configuration directory of etchttpd. Again, that's the server root directive. So back to our server root for a moment, we see that there's a symlink to modules which contains the modules that are loaded. Not all modules in the module subdirectory beneath the modules symlink to user live httpd modules are loaded. There are other items that are not loaded. But the common items, such as authentication-related modules, are loaded. There's one for LDAP. So if you, in fact, have LDAP services in your environment, you can tie Apache into it, perhaps for authentication. Logging. Environmental variables. And many other modules are loaded in the load module section. Now, when you're using Nano, if you want to know the percentage of a document, execute control.